gone are the times when we used organizational structures which were hierarchical. It's time that we move on to team of teams and a team of teams fundamentally requires trust. So let's see how transitioning from an organizational hierarchy to a team of teams helps you excel. And what we'll be talking about is the capabilities of team of teams. And then friction is an emergent property. Why trust matters, how to build trust between individuals and trust at a team level and what I'll be coming up with soon. So there are four key competencies that fuel or hinder the success of a person or an organization, therefore. The first one is trust, then having a common purpose and then a shared consciousness and empowered execution. Today we'll focus on trust. Trust is the faith in benevolence, competence and reliability of a teammate or the entire team or other teams. So even when friction is such a property that even if it is not intended, when we connect over distances and work remotely because of online interactions, like I have a new idea and it's late at night, I wouldn't be telling to an immediate time a team member from India, but rather I would have spoken to a US counterpart who would be awake, it's his working hours. And then next morning when I tell it to my teammate or my teammate gets to know that through the senior from US, then there's a kind of friction that's generated. That was not necessary. It just happened because I thought I should not disturb him late at night. And it was something urgent which I had to communicate. But there's friction. There are so many examples like this where friction is an emergent property. Now, why does trust matter? Trust is one of the four capabilities that's consistently demonstrated by high performing teams, which I have told you just now. And the first thing that you have to do is to establish the capability of trust. That's what removes uncertainty. And people must feel safe to share their ideas. They must feel safe to innovate. And that's what fuels growth. Trust can be broken down into multiple factors. But when it comes to workplaces, there are three things that stand out clearly. When it comes to personal life, there could be additional factors involved. But these are the three main factors. Does the person have the competence? Do you trust his skills? Do you think he will be able to do that? Then the benevolence. Do you think he will have my interests in mind while doing something to make decisions? Is the person as does the person have the benevolence required? Is the person reliable? Can I trust him? Will he take responsibility throughout? These are the primary factors which influence trustworthiness. How does trust between individuals play out? Now these three factors. For example, when how do how do these factors actually play out? Person one might be showing competence to a person whose priority is something else. His highest priority is benevolence, but then person one projecting competence will not result in much success there. But understanding that the priorities are different will help person one project his benevolence higher and reliability higher more than competence. And that's what helps them build trust. How do you do this? You should get to know each other, ask questions. What kind of questions? It's not what can I do to build trust with you? No, that's not the question. Know about each other's past experiences, understand what matters most to both of you. This is how you must be going about it. And when it comes to a team level, when I'm telling about individuals, it's already complicated, but then it becomes exponentially complex. If I am at the center with three of the factors, then all my teammates are put into place. Each of them has their own degrees or their own orders, hierarchies for these three factors. And the degree to which I broadcast, each of this could uh, ring a bell to somebody who has similar 
priorities and some two members could be involved much more intricately than I would ever understand. And all these factors, this is how varying degrees of trust play out within a team. And there could be some particular interaction where no matter how much you try to understand, the degree of trust is limited between a project manager and a purely technical employee. How do we build a foundation for trust? Of course, trust is the cornerstone of every resilient team. You know, you know that it feels obvious. The real challenge is building trust, particularly in a stressful environment. How do you understand the essential ingredients and diagnose the weak spots? These are critical to relationships. Let me start with benevolence. Do I trust that the person is thinking of others and has the team's best interest? Now, this is benevolence. What do you do if you are perceived as lacking benevolence? Listen to others, proactively share your resources, your actions demonstrate your empathy, ask ask questions, get to know each other. And if a team member appears to lack benevolence, don't rush to judgment. Seek to understand before expecting to be understood. Do not be naive and fight their actions. Encourage them to share their logic and why they think something as more important in contrast to what you think. That's what builds benevolence. Now coming to competence. Do you trust that the person has the knowledge and the capability? Of course, a basic competence check is done before getting into the organization. But still, if you are perceived as lacking competence, acknowledge what you know and what you do not. This self-awareness is what makes you stand out of the crowd. This actually when somebody tells that I do not know this, then the other person is proactively thinking, well, he doesn't know this, but there could be so many other things that the person knows. So acknowledge and learn from others who are willing to help you out. If a team member lacks competence, then have the tough conversation. Discuss the problematic areas directly. Use specific examples how it hurt the team and identify some tangible ways in which you will help them develop this capability. The third part is reliability. Do you trust that they will do the right thing consistently? It's a personal check and check for any other person within the organization. If you are perceived as lacking reliability, then fight the urge to overpromise. There are examples where you promise more than what you can deliver, and then, then you are not performing up to the marks you set by yourself, but that will help not help you in maintaining your integrity. Make apologies, not excuses if you miss and always deliver at the time that you tell that you will deliver. And if a team member appears to lack reliability, provide your expectations, timelines in writing. Ask them to schedule regular status updates. This will help you monitor progress and course correct along the way. If somebody fails to meet the prescribed ex expectations, hold them accountable and help them see how their failure negatively impacted the team. And I am doing this with my team. Trust cannot be manufactured overnight, but it can be accelerated by vulnerability and transparency. This I've seen time and again as a leader. I've, when I've broadcast vulnerability, when I've broadcast transparency, it comes back, what goes, comes back again and I better know people, they better know me and things are more transparent, they trust more, we have a better time together and we have a long lasting relationship. Trust the cornerstone of team performance to enable teams to work together, take risks, function productively. You can use this model to judge within your team and within yourselves as individuals, which one of which of these three components that people might perceive that you lack, what actions can you do to be more trustworthy? I do this exercise every now and then. I'll come up soon. Follow. I'm going to follow it up with the discussions on other team of teams capabilities such as common purpose, shared consciousness, and empowered execution. And then comes 
resilience. Resilience is fundamental to having a working organization, a thriving organization in the modern day. Thank you. Have a nice day.